In 2011 to 2012, there were 300,000, at least 300,000, warrantless collections of data on Australian citizens by Australian police forces and the Attorney General's office. That doesn't include the bulk interception that the National Security Agency is doing, which is for the United States alone, over 2 billion interceptions per month through the US IT companies. The 300,000 figure is just what we can see easily. So we have to ask the question, given the relationship between the Defence Signals Directorate, Australia's bulk spying agency, and the National Security Agency, and ASIO and the CIA and the National Security Agency, are we seeing an effective laundry happening? Because this has happened in other countries. So the United States has some legislation, very, very poorly applied and poorly interpreted, saying that, well, under certain circumstances, they can intercept the telecommunications content of Americans. So they can intercept the metadata, the description of who speaks to who, which reveals the entire social structure uh, of a country. They can intercept all that without a warrant, but they need to be a little bit careful about intercepting Americans. But the way this intelligence game has worked in the past is countries just intercept their citizens for each other. The Defence Signals Directorate can be tasked by the United States to intercept US citizens for which they're concerned that there may need to be some kind of judicial oversight and then simply pass on the information and vice versa. So how much of the vast hoovering apparatus that the National Security Agency has constructed is in fact being accessed by DSD? Well, we know, we know, we know that a lot of, we know that a lot of, <laughs> it's a, a spooky uh, reminder. A spooky um, reminder. Now, this week has been an important week for us. It's been an important week for everyone who is connected to the internet. And to understand everyone connected to the internet, we must understand that once upon a time, just going back five or six years ago, we could talk about people connected to the internet and we could talk about others. We can't do that anymore. The internet has penetrated every aspect of our society. And our society has penetrated every aspect of the internet. These two civilizations have merged and fed upon one another and enriched each other and distorted each other. And there is no greater reflection of that than the revelations of Edward Snowden and there is no greater example of that than the trial of Bradley Manning in the United States. Now, we might think that the internet is a place where we are all equals and we all communicate. And it is a new civilian world, a new world where we can develop our ideas and understandings of how planet Earth actually works, where in some sense we are all equal because we can all communicate to everyone. They may not want to listen, but at least if they do, we can send it to anyone. But it is not an equal place. This week's revelations have proven it is very far from an equal place and is very far from a civilian place. The internet has been transformed into a militarily occupied state when all of our private communications, heartfelt, the inner core of our life, communications between boyfriends and girlfriends, between husbands and wives, sons and daughters, between business partners, even between bureaucracies and states, when all of those communications are swept up, hoovered up into a vast collection apparatus, indexed and stored for all time, available only to a select few, then we're in a situation where we have a tank on the street of the inner core of our lives, where we have a soldier under our bed listening to everything that a husband and wife says to each other when they're communicating on email or SMS. The penetration of the digital of civilian life 
is also the penetration of the military and intelligence agencies of civilian life. Edward Snowden revealed something that I have been speaking about for a long time, provided clear, concrete proof that as the internet has penetrated every aspect of the society, riding on with it is mass surveillance. Mass surveillance by the National Security Agency of the United States, working in cooperation with its partners and other countries trying to do the same thing, although not nearly as effectively. Some of you hopefully have seen the graph in the four pages released by the mainstream media detailing the National Security Agency's prison program. It shows the interflows of information between continents. And that is how people in this game look at it, just like oil pipelines connecting the raw energy supplies of entire continents. We now have a new source of wealth, a new war for it, a new great game for the bulk flows of information that connect humanity together, to grab onto them, to surround them like armies surround oil wells or customs agents surround goods crossing the border. Now that seems like a very negative description of the state of the world. But I want to talk about another phenomena. Simultaneously, as the internet has penetrated society and military and security agencies have come in together with it, like crabs in the tide, and penetrated and intercepted our most important communications. We have, over the last four years, developed a new body politic, an unconscious body politic that is not even aware yet of itself. That new body politic is natural. If a group of people are placed together for the first time in an island, it would develop an understanding about what it found to be important and what its hopes were and what its dreams were. The internet in bringing people together, in penetrating nearly every society, has created a new realm where political discussion, discussion about values, discussion about what is important to us as a race, as a human race, has developed. The transition over the last four years has been to take the internet from a politically apathetic space into a political space, where those people who are engaged with it understand the decisions that affect the internet also affect their lives online and affect their lives offline. And they want to fight to preserve those things that they find important and fight to suppress those who would take them away. The alleged actions of Bradley Manning and Snowden and many others are part of that phenomenon, part of that development of a new understanding of who we are as an international people. Of course, it has come with the youngest people, people under the age of 20, people who were in effect born into this world, who went through their initial struggles of adulthood in this world, who were educated by this world, who were educated by our beliefs, and by what we have seen, and by this mass political education, the undreamt of political education in human history. There has never been such a moment where so many people from so many places have seen what the world is really like, what their place in the world is, what the place and behavior of others near to them truly is. From that, there has been a distillation of values, a distillation of the first value of our new global civilization. And that first value is something that is coupled to the network itself. It is the right to communicate, the right to speak, what we believe, the right to receive information from others. It is those rights which are associated with the United Nations Article 19, the right to receive and impart information in any medium across frontiers. Now, going back to the mass interception that is occurring, how can we struggle against this? Well, 
One way, yes, there are technical steps such as cryptography. The other is to understand the power of this new body politic that has developed internationally in English and in other languages and domestically in Australia, to harness this new body politic. We always talk about the internet being the one thing that can smash through the manufacture of consent, that historical manufacture of consent by corrupt media organizations. And it's true. Uh, the internet has largely provided a mechanism to get around the worst of this manufacturing of consent. But when we see the democratic mandate coming out of these polls, we can understand there's another way to get change, to erect these values as part of a measured mandate. That's what elections are about when they work well. It's to measure what people really want, what the majority of people want, what values they find to be important, and then to instill those values in an individual or a group of individuals who people are confident will represent them. Let's understand how this surveillance system that Snowden has most forcefully exposed this week is represented in Australia. Philip Dawling in the Sydney Morning Herald, a fine uh, national security journalist, has revealed that there's extensive interlinks. And for those people who've been following the spy agencies uh, like me for 20 years, it's no surprise at all that the Defence Signals Director at DSD in Australia is part of the system. It's part of the collection system. And we see that some of the documents themselves that Snowden has released show that GCHQ, the sister organisation of the National Security Agency and D DSD, entered into the prison program back in 2011. The Anglophone Alliance of Security Organisations is being knitted together in a tighter and tighter manner. Now, if Australia had a population of 200 million, perhaps in some ways that could be acceptable, although there is still a risk of what William Binney, National Security Agency scientist, calls turnkey totalitarianism, where he built all the structure for totalitarianism, just like similar structures erected under the Stasi. We have built it now. All it requires is a bad government and arguably looking at the extrajudicial assassination programs in the United States, perhaps we already have that. We have already built this structure and it just requires turning the key. Now, in Australia, we have less than a tenth of the population in the United States. Australia is being turned into US aircraft carrier in the Pacific. It's being turned into a giant signals interception station. Australia needs a strong defense. Every country needs a strong defense if it is to keep its own self-determination, not have it imposed by others. But even Malcolm Fraser now says that effectively that Australia has been overrun by US interests. Australia is the easiest place in the world for US intelligence agencies to work. So Australia really has a difficult time to secure its own sovereignty in the face of an English speaking power it is over 10 times the size and has the basic structures. There's very little barrier to entry. Um, and that is why we have to take absolute care that this militarization of cyberspace, that the militarization of civilian life is kept as far as possible from Australia, not by weakening Australia's security or its military, but rather by strengthening them to make them more independent so that they're actually working for Australian values, to strengthen the Australian government and to strengthen Canberra so it is actually working for Australians. It is not working for networks. That's the reality of Australian politics and it has to be stopped. And it has to be stopped by bringing people who have proven themselves to be incorruptible to this phenomenon, bringing them into Canberra and to clean out this sort of activity. It also needs to be done by laying down protective legislation. So we must first start to reveal what is actually going on. We must have full and proper transparent reporting on the behavior of ASIO and DSD and the other intelligence organizations in Australia. What are the nature of their sharing relationships with the United States? What information are they collecting on Australians? ASIO and the DSD must be susceptible to the Freedom of Information Act. 
Uh, even the CIA in the United States is susceptible to the Freedom of Information Act. Of course, it finds many excuses to avoid responding to the Freedom of Information Act, such as national security exemptions or cannot confirm or deny or, and so on. Uh, but it is simply not acceptable to ring fence off uh, an organization like ASIO, which has increased uh, nearly four times in size in the last eight years, to ring fence it off and create a land where transparency does not apply, where there can be no scrutiny to its activities. When we know it's associated with a system of unprecedented abuse and unprecedented danger, ASIO and DSD must be susceptible to Freedom of Information Act requests. It must be possible for us as Australians to understand what the Australian government is doing and how it is behaving, how it is dispensing its authority. Similarly, where privacy is violated, it must be done so under the stringest conditions. There must be an audit trail. It cannot be the case that without warrants, hundreds of thousands of Australians are intercepted per year. That is not acceptable. The WikiLeaks party, if it is elected to government, will insist that all interceptions of Australians take place under a judicial basis. And those authorities intercepting Australians must report twice yearly to Parliament about their activities, and they must be susceptible to the Freedom of Information Act.